It's an honor to be here among the August gathering. <clears throat> I'm supposed to say something about the gross national happiness. But before I say as something about gross national happiness, I would like to put forward a few points on why gross national happiness. And after that, uh, I would like to share some concepts on gross national happiness. But I won't like to go in details. I'll keep the paper on uh, gross national happiness and its indices and other things. First <clears throat> point that I would like to share is that uh, the concept of peace should include l not uh, a lack of lack of conflicts on one hand and experience of inner peace and happiness on the other. The ex uh, absence of external conflict does not mean presence of internal peace and happiness. Uh, therefore, we must work towards both avoidance of conflict and promotion of peace and happiness. That is the first thing why we are talking about gross national happiness. Second is, we must keep in mind that at the end of the day, all, we all want the same thing, that is happiness. And we would like to avoid suffering. In the quest of happiness, humans have used different methods and all too often these means have been aggressive and harsh. Such short-sighted actions bring nothing but suffering to others and ourselves. A sustainable happiness in, uh, of individuals or a group can never be built on the cost of others' suffering and by showing total disregard to the future of the earth and long-term needs of life itself on the earth. Third thing that I would like to share is, share is that today, one nation's problem can no longer be resolved satisfactorily by itself, alone. Much depends, therefore, on the interests, attitudes, and corporations of other nations. We need one another more than ever before. All global problems call for compassionate approach. We've been talking about this compassionate approach from the morning itself. When people are motivated mostly by greed and jealousy, it is not possible for them to live in harmony. And the fourth one is, perhaps from my point of view, very important. Education is now relegated to mere literacy and acquisition of skills so that you can earn your bread and not in refinement of the moral fibers. There's a big difference. At this juncture, I think we have far more educated people. Percentage of educated people of, uh, all over the world has increased, but that has not improved the moral fiber of the people uh, as it used to be the education in the past. As you are all aware, from the Buddhist point of view, all kinds of, kind of structural conditions of conflict arise ultimately from the lack of threefold mind training in terms of right view, right conduct, and right meditation. It is not just enough to have the right view if your conduct is not uh, commensurating with that. And it is also important that we have to have right meditation. But here, we have to understand meditation in the form of habitual pattern, in form of familiarization. If you have more and more number of compassionate leaders who acknowledge, uh, who are knowledgeable in the above training, we, are, we will definitely have the hope for the future. And, and also it has been said that at the moment we have, there's a crisis of leadership in the world. By far the greatest single danger of facing all, living, <clears throat> facing all living beings on our planet is the threat of nuclear destruction. However, ever since the world wars and end of colonial era, the production of weapons, building of arms and armies have grown worldwide. These have contributed to a world where we feel relatively more insecure than ever. As you know, there are more than 15,000 nuclear warheads and nations spend more on military than on the environment and preservation and preservation of the environment. The leaders of nuclear powers literally hold the future of, uh, of the world in their hands. How can we live in trepidation in the era of knowledge and advancement of technology? The progress <clears throat> had been steady in terms of promotion of human rights to some extent. However, in form of, uh, however, the from the overall point of view of all sentient beings, welfare of lives of animals have deteriorated sharply. We consume more than 250 billions of animals every year. This excludes trillions of creatures consume their seafoods. Livestock production through industrial methods 
have reduced their welfare. In fact, production of li livestock, especially cattle for meat consumption, is one of the main reasons for environmental degradation uh, through forest clearing and greenhouse gas production. Enough peace and happiness of every individual is therefore the ultimate yardstick of every nation and national progress. The patrimony of environmental resilience and diversity are the ultimate assets of the future generation in our country. And by undermining the environment, we ultimately undermine the inner peace and happiness of future generations. Now in Bhutan, um, we have what we call gross national happiness. Now, gross national happiness uh, was actually promulgated by fourth king of Bhutan. Uh, he said that, uh, to begin with, he said that gross national happiness is more important than gross uh, national product. Since then, it has changed both the discourse and direction of the development in Bhutan, the ways in which government and business are conducted, as well as its diplomacy and, and international relations. It has become a kind of an unwritten constitution of the people. JNH has enhanced country's sovereignty and independence. It has raised its international profile and status. It has become country's soft power. It has contributed to the national economy and has helped Bhutan face the and overcome challenges of 21st century. JNH works in Bhutan. At no point, uh, at, no, at no period in Bhutan's history, has GNH been more relevant than today as the country grapples with the challenges posed by globalization. His Majesty the King, the present King, said that to him the GNH signifies development with values. <clears throat> and uh, he said that GNH is the bridge between the fundamental values of kindness, equality, humanity, and necessary pursuit for economic growth. GNH acts as our national conscious, guiding us towards making wise decisions for a better future. It ensures that no matter what our nation may seek to achieve human dimension, the individual's place in the nation is never forgotten. It is a constant reminder that we must strive for caring leadership so that as the world and the country changes, as our nation goal, nation's goal change, change, our foremost priority will always remain the happiness and well-being of our people. Now, gross national happiness is actually now implemented through the programs of policies of four pillars. And among others, the four pillars include good governance, preservation and promotion of culture, and it, uh, preservation uh, of the environment, uh, and uh, uh, sustainable uh, promotion of uh, the what you call economy, sustainable economy. Now, first pillar is <clears throat> very important, good, uh, good governance, because all other programs uh, we will have to be implemented through good governance. So I don't have to explain good governance, because everybody knows good governance. But the most important thing is the culture. Now, <clears throat> during the, with the uh, course of changes in Bhutan, we have, you know, we realized that we have forgotten culture to some extent. And after introducing gross national happiness, we would like, we are happy to report that in Bhutan, the, the importance of culture has been heightened. And in Bhutan, just now, uh, we would like to say that cultural values, traditional values, the wisdom of our culture, uh, we, have, uh, we are embracing those very closely. Um, in the culture, uh, the Department of Culture, we have something embossed on the wall. And I, I brought that uh, 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 when I went to Japan, because they were actually at that time exhibiting, um, <coughs> ex uh, showing exhibition of Afghanistan's uh, museum artifacts. <coughs> and they said, outside the Afghan's museum, which I believe now is all blown, on the stone it is written, a nation stays alive when its uh, culture stays alive. So we have now embossed this in iron cast and put it on the wall of our culture of the department. And we feel that this is very important. Uh, culture gives the impetus to everything that is useful, 
uh, that is collective, that creates harmony, that brings a thing. But then there are good things as well as bad things in culture. So in Bhutanese we say that if the culture says and does something that is bad, even if it is taught to, to you by parents, abandon it. If the culture says something good, even if it belongs to the enemies, you cultivate them. So culture is very important from that point of view. Now, <clears throat> environment, we have done very well in, as far as the environment is concerned. When I was a young boy, all the mountains were actually empty because of the cultivation, because of uh, cut and slash kind of a thing. Uh, we used to uh, cut so many trees, but we have more trees now than what you used to have in 1960s and 70s. And <laughs> so we have done very well when it comes to the environment and even now <clears throat> all uh, 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 infrastructural development is have go to through go through a, a very uh, rigorous screening in order to see that environment is uh, preserved and things and we hope to keep it like that now <clears throat> this um, four pillars have been further actually um, diversified and uh, research and the center for Bhutan studies which I am not actually uh, represented but this will put there so um, they have got nine domains when it comes to gross national happiness as to how it has been done, mainly because we would like to measure gross national happiness through surveys and then we would like to see them in the health is number one, education is two, living standard of the people is three, ecological diversity and resilience is four, good governance is five, cultural diversity and resilience is six, community vitality is seven, psychological well-being is eight and time use is nine. So these domains like health, education, and living standard are very familiar uh, with all human uh, development uh, uh, perspectives. And, but then um, cutting edge are, uh, and innovative domains are, uh, are the, those which uh, include time use, psychological well-being, and others. Now, in order to measure this gross national happiness through the surveys, we have also got, GNH has got 33 key clustered indicators and 123 variables. So I will not go into details of all these things. Uh, but uh, understanding happiness is that happiness according to GNH is achieved when people reach sufficiency in the r roughly six out of nine domains of the equivalent proportions of the weighted indica indicators. Wow. So uh, uh, there are also a lot of statistics of percentages and a lot of things. I will not go into details of those things. But what is more important is that uh, because the king of Bhutan, fourth king of Bhutan, as well as now the fifth king of Bhutan, they consider that this uh, GNH is very important for Bhutan. Planning Commission of Bhutan is called GNH Commission. Um, <clears throat> we have also been in a position to work with the United Nations and now 20th May, I think, the exact date, uh, is considered as uh, uh, global, you know, happiness, day of happiness, happiness, and it's been celebrated and uh, observed in Bhutan, and I hope it's been done elsewhere also in this order. Uh, so, briefly, I just have to share only these few things. Thank you very much, Madam Chair.